All right. So here we are making another terrible video on mining. For a mining rig, it'll hold 14 GPUs. So we'll get right into it. They give you uh, some hardware. They send you some gloves. These you need to like put the whole damn thing together. These just anchor the, the rails together, damn it. Yeah, the rails. So I like to pre-assemble them so that once they uh, I get them together, I just kind of start the threads like that on both sides. And then that's going to go right here. Like that. You just let it hang there inside, and then you're going to grab the wrench. So yeah, just grab a little Allen wrench here. I think it's like a two and a half or a three millimeter, um, but the kit comes with one, so you don't really need to worry about it. Once you get it assembled, just kind of freehand, just kind of snug up the the nuts a little bit there. So there, the first leg is complete. Just move it out of the way and repeat the process with the remaining parts and create the other leg. Peel the paper off of here. This is where if you are really concerned about fingerprints, you grab the white gloves down there. Acrylic is nice material to work with when you're dealing with computers, I think. It's, it's just easy to work with. If you need to make a hole or something, it's there. They're pretty cheap. I mean, especially if you're a machinist or a fabricator, you've got access to something that can cut. And, uh, you know, the logo actually helps you put it on correctly. So that's how you know you have it installed correctly. Now we grab the motherboard. The ASUS B250 Mining Expert. Now this will support up to 19 GPUs, but we're not going to use all 19. So once you get your motherboard out, get it ready to mount, you got to grab your hardware. And again, it's going to require a couple of special pieces of hardware. So first things first, take your motherboard and kind of line it up and figure out how it's going to go. All your peripherals are going to face towards the back. You got to grab a long screw, shove it up from the bottom, thread it into a pillar, and then mount your motherboard on that and secure it with the short screws. And you're just gonna go ahead and lay your motherboard on top of that. So at this time you can go ahead and mount SSD or what have you, so that or whatever kind of drive you're gonna use. We're gonna go ahead and use a solid state hard drive. So there you go. Now you got yourself a hard drive mounted to that thing. So after this is power supply. You're gonna need Another acrylic part, this guy. This particular power supply unit is 650 watts. So this is what we're gonna be putting in our in our mining rig. This will power up to six GPUs, no problem. Take this little guy on here and you can see on the other side that there's some screws that mount right into the rails there. And of course you have to take one of the back legs off in order to do that. But I found it was pretty easy to just slide it off the end of the table here so try to put the power supply as close to the center as you can. So once you have those feet on there, you'll find that the screws line up a lot better. Now we're ready to go ahead and start assembling the next part for the GPUs. Ooh. And that's just what can happen. You see that's so rigid? Okay. So now that I've got it down to my height, again, kind of, I'll go ahead and use this again as a reference. I'm using one of the short legs as a height reference so that I can make sure that the graphics rail is fairly level. It's not perfect, but this way I can get it at least visually perfect and good enough to at least hold the GPUs straight and in their PCI slots. Once you get that done and secured, you go ahead and move your acrylic piece into position and tighten it down and then it's ready to install risers. You get these online. There's no major company that makes them. So to do this, I recommend something to poke through the foam. And one of the things that I use is my multimeter. These, these are perfect. You know, you just come through here and stab the foam out right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the plastic container that came with everything. And I'm gonna pour all my shit in here. So, in a similar fashion to the way the motherboard was mounted, 
we're going to take the same screws and we're going to mount the GPU risers to the upper level here. With the same way, we have a longer screw underneath connected to a pillar. Then the GPU riser sits on top of that. And I'm only using two screws per pillar. You can use up to four, but two is good enough that keeps them from moving around. I am still using four pillars underneath so that it, it sits flat. For our processor, we decided to go with a Gen 7 i5. Nothing too fancy, but not as crappy as a Celeron processor either. Um, it does just come with the processor. Um, usually these things come with a heatsink, but in this particular case, um, it just came with the processor chip instead. So we'll get that situated there and close the latch. For our choice of RAM, we decided to go with some Corsair 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM, and that should definitely be sufficient for everything that we're going to be throwing at it. Um, one thing that we didn't think of here um, is the heatsink. Now we do have a heatsink, and it's actually a really nice heatsink. I mean, it's big, it's beautiful, it's horizontal. I'd love to throw it on there, but. Um, we are going to need some hardware underneath the motherboard in order to mount this heatsink. So guess what? That means we have to take the entire thing apart and start all over again. <laughs> so we'll take the motherboard off. It's actually a good thing we didn't connect any of the cables to it yet. And we'll have to turn it upside down and um, mount the hardware from the bottom. So I'm going to be clearing some space so I can place the motherboard on an anti-static mat. And then I'll see which way is the best way to orient the hardware. And once you figure it out, just go ahead and peel the sticker off of it, put it back in place, and gently press on the back of the motherboard to secure it. And then do the same thing to the other side. And this basically just gives us threads from the top so that we can screw our heatsink down to the chip. Once you mount the heatsink, you're gonna to wanna to take the fan off on the side. And obviously this is easier to do before you start it on there, but I was stupid and already started it. So once you get the fan off, you can go ahead and screw the rest of the heatsink on and secure it to the hardware that you mounted below. Next on our list is starting to connect power cords. And we will begin with the uh, lights and the buttons that they were kind enough to send us. These actually come in quite handy because they let you know if your uh, miner has crashed or not because that red light blinks about every five to 10 seconds when all is well. Next, we'll hook up our main power. This goes to the motherboard from the power supply. Now we can actually hook up three of these on this motherboard. We have A, B, and C over there. We're just gonna be using lane A though because we only have a limited number of GPUs to connect anyway. I like to put my fingers under there just to support the motherboard a little bit so I don't put too much pressure on the board itself. Next, we'll connect our serial ATA power and this will also power our Molex connector over here um, for our PCI-1 slots in lane A. Now the computer should be ready to power up. We are ready to turn it on, go to our BIOS, and begin installing our operating system. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and boot it up to the BIOS first without hooking up any GPUs. And we're just gonna make sure the motherboard is uh, good to go and we're gonna update the BIOS. So to do this, we're gonna need to connect to the internet. So we're going to start first by updating the BIOS. Go to advanced mode, tools. So we'll get our BIOS updated first on this motherboard. And then we'll start configuring it. So I'm going to go over the configurations in the BIOS here because I think it's worthwhile repeating. There are other YouTube videos that go over this exact same information, but I often have to go back to that exact same video to refer to it so just by me reiterating in this video I'm helping myself learn a little better you go under advanced and the first one you want to uh, do is system agent configuration you want to go to DMI OPI configuration 
and you want to set your DMI max link speed to Gen 2. And you're gonna, this is going to be a theme throughout this uh, process. Okay, so the next one you want to go to is going to be out. You're going to back up out of the system agent, and then you're going to go down to the one below it, PCH configuration, and then PCI Express configuration, and the PCIe speed is Gen 1. You want that to be on Gen 2. And then you can just back up out of there to the advanced mode again. Pretty sure that is the only thing we need to really mess around with. This board basically comes out of the box pretty much ready to go. I'm setting these to Gen 2 to make the board a little bit more stable. And then I'm going to set my boot preferences so that it boots fast. We want fast boot enabled, power loss, fast boot. And um, that's pretty much it. Then you just go ahead and exit to save the changes. It'll say what all you're going to be doing. Hit OK. So now that we've got the BIOS updated and configured, we need to install our operating system. And this is where I deviate from other videos that I've seen. We are going to be uh, attempting to set this miner up with Ubuntu Linux and we're just going to go ahead and put this on there this is completely uh, uncharted territory I've never tried mining on Linux before but a lot of people do it so we're going to work through the problems and the challenges and uh, document it here on this video here we are we're booting to Ubuntu sweet Ubuntu is my favorite Linux operating system and we're all done. It takes about a half an hour to install off the USB drive there. Maybe 20 minutes or something. Um, this is just the basic layout. I'm not going to go over it too much. Now that we have this connected here, we are going to start plugging in GPUs. And we're going to download the software and get everything going. We're going to go ahead and hook up one GPU. So I'm going to just go ahead and show you how to hook it up in the riser. It should be noted here that the RX 580 has a 6 and an 8 pin connector. So I like to go ahead and use the 8 pin connector and I use this directly from the power supply and just plug it straight in just like that. So we've got this one here as well as the one on the bottom of the riser. So there's actually two power sources. One of the riser and one here as well as our power supply to the Molex connector which provides power to all six of the PCI ones in rows A. So at this point, this is ready to go. This is ready to boot up. So let's go ahead and turn that on and see what it looks like. Okay, we got our power on. And look at that, we got power to our video card. Fans are running. And you can see that it's illuminated indicating that that GPU is functional. So it's uh, it's installing the drivers here. And there we go. I like Linux, everything is command based. You can have GUIs too, but to me I just like typing in everything and having complete control over what you're doing. So that's why Linux rocks. Okay, so now we have Claymore installed. That was really pretty easy. You just type in the command and it downloads it. It's really not a very large file at all. A megabyte and a half. So this will be depending on um, what pool you use. We're going to use Mining Pool Hub because that's what we use. Um, they have the lowest pool fees and they're pretty cool. So, so at this point, we have to log into Mining Pool Hub. Okay, sorry guys, I totally skipped all of the steps necessary to do this, but I just wanted to show that, yeah, you can, you can mine with um, Ubuntu 17.1, and this was actually no more difficult to set up than Windows Awesome Miner. Uh, if you know a thing or two about Linux, I wouldn't recommend doing this if you've never, ever messed with Linux before. Uh, but if you know a thing or two about Bash and you've actually done a little bit of uh, research and learned a thing or two about Linux, then this is probably the way to go. Um, just using MinerPoolHub.com and Claymore. Super simple. 
Uh, first, I just want to apologize. I mean, I'm sorry I don't know why I didn't film the steps to uh, to actually set up the miner in Ubuntu. So in lieu of that, I'm just going to show you what I learned and how I found the information. Um, basically, there's a whole write-up on this over on Steamit.com. If you don't have a Steamit account, I would highly recommend signing up. But over here you have an Ethereum AMD GPU mining tutorial and it goes through everything that you need literally to set this up once Ubuntu is installed. And this is for 16.04 long-term support, but I used 17, which worked the same. There was some really tiny differences, but nothing significant, nothing worth mentioning. In his tutorial, he used ethermine.org. Um, I chose to use miningpoolhub.com so that was a little bit different in my setup but it really is the same otherwise there's your stratum servers you can grab those from your pool whatever you have and then you just literally follow the instructions you open up a terminal window and just start typing away he gives you the exact commands you can even copy and paste them if you need to um, the only part that might be different is the drivers um, actually no those were the same that was exactly the same. Installing Claymore was the same. There was literally no difference um, in that until I actually got down to the mining file. That was the only part that obviously was different because I'm using a different pool and different Ethereum wallet and the pool actually allows auto profit switching which is why I like miningpoolhub.com. And uh, that was literally it. So if you guys just follow the instructions on this write up here, you will have a miner up in Ubuntu in no time. It really only took about five minutes after I started typing to the point where I was literally mining away. Um, I mean, I skipped benchmarking and didn't really do any other configuration, but kind of out of the box, it worked pretty good. And I was actually surprised on how easy it was. So, Anyway, guys, if you learned anything out of this, go ahead and hit that like button. If you, uh, if you want to see more kind of computer content, let me know in the comments below or let me know what other kind of computer projects you'd like to see in future videos. Until then, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.